Forged in the fires of conquest, the Roman colossus bathed in the golden age of Pax Romana, a piece that fostered art, literature, and the very notion of civilization. But time, as it always has been, is relentless, and this mighty empire, once seemingly eternal, would soon face a crossroads that would reshape the world. Hello, and welcome to Impactful Moments, where we explore some of the most, you guessed it, impactful moments in human history. If history is your thing, or you simply enjoy learning new topics, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. Your support helps us to continue creating captivating, impactful historical content. In this video, we will discuss the split of the Roman Empire, an event that shattered an empire and birthed a continent. Following the tumultuous decline of the Roman Republic, marred by inner turbulence and civil wars, the Roman Empire started off with a bang, experiencing one of the most prosperous and powerful periods in recorded human history. Spanning approximately two centuries, this era of relative peace and expansion, known as Pax Romana, culminated with the passing of Marcus Aurelius in 180 CE. Shortly following Marcus Aurelius's death, Rome faced a succession of challenges, notably during the Severan dynasty, a rule of five emperors spanning just over 40 years. The rulers of this era, grappling with the defense of extensive borders against potential invaders like Germanic tribes of the north and the Parthian and Sassanid empires in the east, devalued the Roman currency and implemented policies such as increased military pay. While ostensibly aimed at short-term stability, these measures ultimately strained the empire's resources, laying the groundwork for a period of profound turmoil. The following decades, known as the Crisis of the 3rd Century, witnessed relentless invasions along virtually all Roman frontiers, bringing the empire to the verge of collapse. Despite previous unsuccessful attempts by emperors to restore stability, Emperor Diocletian in 293 initiated a monumental restructuring of the empire's currencies and governance. Diocletian established the Tetrarchy, dividing the empire into eastern and western sections, marking a groundbreaking shift in administrative strategy. Each region was overseen by a senior emperor, titled Augustus, and a junior emperor, and ultimate heir to Augustus, designated as the Caesar. This division aimed to provide more focused leadership and a clearer path for imperial succession. While this move proved largely successful in stabilizing the empire's border, it fell far short of its goals of resolving the leadership transitions, often even exacerbating conflicts, epitomized by the Battle of the Milvian Bridge between Constantine and Maxentius for supremacy in the western provinces. Although Constantine won the day, ultimately unifying the east and west back under his sole rule, Diocletian's initial partition had already begun to erode Rome's centrality. His effective relocation of the capital to Milan and its subsequent official relocation to Byzantium under Constantine also foreshadowed the empire's continued shift. Renamed Nova Roma, meaning New Rome, and ultimately Constantinople by the populace, the geographical shift of the capital mirrored what would become broader transformations within the empire. The ascendance of Christianity, championed by Constantine following the Edict of Milan in 313 CE, could be seen in the growth of Constantinople, where lavish churches and Christian thought dominated the city, a move that acted as a microcosm of Christianity's spread across the entire empire. Throughout the latter half of the 4th century, the eastern half of the empire emerged as a paramount hub of trade and influence, while Rome and the west struggled against incessant border incursions. With power dynamics evolving, religious landscapes shifting, and the capital relocated, the empire underwent a profound metamorphosis and was hardly recognizable from its republican origins. Following the reign of Theodosius I, who passed away in 395 CE, the empire formally splintered under the rule of his sons, Honorius in the west and Arcadius in the east. Historians regard this division as the official split of the once unified empire, signaling the dawn of a new era. The initial period of fracture of the Roman Empire in 395 might not have seemed like a radical departure relative to past divisions. Dual leadership wasn't new. 
Figures like Mark Antony and Octavian, and the Tetrarchy itself, had certainly divided power for periods. This time, however, the split proved far more permanent. The intention may have been to maintain the empire as two halves of a whole, but history had a different course charted. While the Eastern Roman Empire flourished, becoming a vibrant center of trade, art, and a distinct Christian identity, the West, already grappling with internal weaknesses, faced a descent into further decline. Barbarian raids intensified, chipping away at the empire's borders and resources. This disparity in fortunes highlighted a crucial difference, the way each half approached governance and security. The East, with its capital in Constantinople, maintained a more centralized power structure. The emperor held significant authority, and the military remained a strong professional force, drawing heavily from its own citizens. In contrast, the West, plagued by economic woes and political instability, increasingly turned to foederati, or barbarian allies, to bolster its defenses. These arrangements, often involving land grants and subsidies, blurred the lines between Roman and barbarian. However, these alliances, while providing some temporary relief, also weakened the empire's long-term military strength and ceded increasing power to barbarian tribes. Given the Romans' poor treatment of many of these tribes, that secession of power would prove catastrophic for the empire in the 5th century. The reliance on these external forces also eroded the power of the Western Roman emperors. The empire's inability to rely on a dependable Roman army, and subsequent increased dependence on the loyalty of barbarian leaders, created a situation where emperors might hold the title, but wield little real power, becoming puppets to powerful military figures, often not even Roman, a far cry from the strong centralized leadership that once characterized the Roman Empire. The division of the Roman Empire in 395 CE, as noted above, was initially envisioned as a way to manage a vast territory, but ultimately proved to be one of history's most pivotal crossroads, foundationally reshaping world history. As the Western Empire was largely neglected and burdened by barbarian incursions, it became increasingly evident that the torch had passed to their newly born Eastern counterpart, who would carry the Roman mantle for another thousand years. In 476, with the overthrow of Romulus Augustulus, the last Western Roman Emperor, by Odoacer, the division was cemented and the Western Roman Empire officially fell. However, from its ashes rose a new reality, a fragmented Europe where barbarian kingdoms and Roman remnants blended. These kingdoms, such as the Franks and Anglo-Saxons, through centuries of conquest, consolidation, and cultural exchange, laid the groundwork for the nation-states that dominate Europe today. Outside of imperial ambitions, the split also profoundly forged the paths of slowly diverging Christian faiths. While both halves of the empire were Christian, theological differences continued to simmer, culminating in the Great Schism of 1054, which formally divided Christianity into Eastern Orthodoxy and Roman Catholicism. These divides mirrored centuries of increasing cultural and political divisions. The Roman Empire's split is often seen as one of human history's most significant hinge points, with the closing of one door and the opening of a second. While one empire lived on for another 1100 years, the impact of both the Eastern and Western empires can still be seen in practically all aspects of modern Western society. I hope you enjoyed this video and found this period in history both informative and enlightening. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below, and I hope you can join us for another video. Thanks for watching.